Hey guys, my name is Shy, and honestly, I don't entirely know what I want to say, <laughs> but I felt very inspired to make this video right now. I am filming this one day after the new moon in Aquarius, and that new moon had a very strange effect on my mental state. Um, I know it's like an Aquarius stellium right now. It's like the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn <laughs> all in Aquarius. And I felt like it was like pulling my mind outwards, pulling, pulling my mind outwards. So there's really some kind of energy of like expanding beyond where we, where we have been before. And yesterday, I I was just kind of sitting around looking at the window. It was like a snowstorm blowing in and I started to feel for the first time that I was getting like a feeling of what, like what's coming ahead for us, like what new earth is going to be like, you know, what 5D is going to be like, what the age of Aquarius is going to be like, however you like to put it. And for the first time, I was really feeling on a, on a really, you know, on a visceral level that it's really, really, really not about getting everybody to agree. It's really, really not about, um, you know, fighting battles and setting things up the way it should be. It's not even really about, like, finding solutions to all of the world's problems. Um, and I mean, I know if you're watching this video, you probably already know all of that. Um, and it was like, I knew it before yesterday too, but I felt like I knew it more in my mind. It was something I was like thinking about and learning. And now it's kind of starting to descend down into my body and my emotional body. And I'm starting to feel it more viscerally. I just, it's really hard to articulate, but I was having this feeling that, okay, here's the example I want to use. <laughs> um, I have been having this impression lately of like, what would it be to be like to live in my ideal perfect utopia like just just what would that be like for me and i would be like okay it would be so perfect everybody could do exactly what they wanted no matter what that is and then you think okay well how can we allow everybody to do what they want that doesn't work because people want to do bad things and they people infringe on other people's free will and people's rights and blah 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 all of those <laughs> all of those uh unpleasant undesirable things, right? But I, I'm, what I was imagining was like, okay, what if everybody could do whatever they wanted and it never interfered with anybody's free will? And like, if everything was entirely consensual. So even <laughs> to use a very extreme example, even if somebody wanted to be a cannibal in, in this perfect utopia, I was imagining where everybody can live their dream. If somebody just for whatever reason really wanted to be a cannibal, that would be okay because <laughs> you could have somebody equally aligned with that goal, somebody for some inconceivable reason that I can't really imagine maybe would want to be eaten by a cannibal. So you could have both of these people, the cannibal and somebody who wants to be eaten by another human could, you know, meet and they can live out their fantasy <laughs> that way. And in that way, they are living out their dreams and the rest of us who obviously do not want to be eaten by cannibals <laughs> would continue to not be interfered with um, in that kind of way. And I, I hope that example isn't, isn't too disturbing to anybody, but that's what I was thinking, like that level of alignment, if we can all live out our dreams that way. And the more pleasant uh, example is that if everybody is living in perfect alignment, like perfect alignment with their higher self and perfect alignment with source, you would never have to worry about anything, like even finding food. This is what I was imagining. Like, what if I was hungry and I walked outside and I was just walking aimlessly and I put out my hand and in that moment like an orange fell from an orange tree and it fell exactly into my hand and that orange didn't need to be farmed, it didn't need to be plucked from the tree, it fell exactly into my hand at the moment that I was hungry and then I ate that orange and it wasn't just an orange, the kind of crappy oranges we find at the grocery store, it was like, it's like the perfect orange, it is perfectly satisfying, perfectly nutritious, the most delicious, most satisfying, most amazing thing. Like the experience of eating that orange could be, you know, like an acid trip essentially <laughs> where everything that that is the kind of utopia I have been imagining, like to the point where just perfect alignment, right? Perfect alignment to the point where everybody is living out their dreams and everything is perfectly falling into place. And 
I think I lost my train of thought. I guess that was that. I hope that made a little bit of sense. I just wanted to get that out there. That That is what I'm imagining. I feel like that is the dream we have an opportunity to visualize. And the cool thing is that, you know, everybody else's dream, like everybody else's vision for the new earth doesn't have to be the same as mine because they're you know, can be multiple manifestations, multiple different ways of multiple different timelines, right, of how we're moving into this future trajectory. So that is my vision. And I feel like we are just being called to visualize our own ideal um, futures, because I mean, that's literally what we caught this card all the way down at the bottom visualize that is where this is all leading to when i do this uh like nine card spread i actually just used oracle cards today but nine card spread the i read it like a book so i'm actually jumping all the way to the last chapter on this card down at the bottom visualize visualize what are you visualizing um holding the vision for the new earth is what this is about and i think i'm actually going to do this backwards because going backwards from the end of the book we have whispers and awakening What ideas are coming into your mind? What ideas are coming into your mind? Um, especially with this Aquarius stellium. And for anybody watching this years from now and there's nothing with Aquarius is going on, um, you're still, whenever you're watching this, in this energy of expansion and pushing boundaries, pushing the envelope, you know, moving past anything you have ever done before and these whispers are coming into your mind. I mean, for some people, this is, you know, really getting clear audience, um, hearing your guides more clearly, hearing, hearing messages in your dreams and stuff. But this is also just weird ideas that pop into your head. What ideas are popping into your head? You might think they're totally crazy. You might think they're totally crazy, but they're not because they're not just your ideas. They're coming from somewhere. They're coming from somewhere. And you'll start to see that they're coming from somewhere when you look around and you find out that other people are thinking the exact same thing as you. And you think, oh, were we reading each other's minds? Like, did they read my mind? Did I read their mind? And I mean, there could be that on some level happening. But what I think is typically happening is that if a group of people are all thinking the same thing at a similar time, it's because that idea is coming down. That is a inspiration we're receiving from higher realms. And that is why synchronicities are so fascinating and so interesting because they confirm that our ideas are something more than just our own thoughts. They are, you know, downloads or inspiration from higher realms. And we are starting to receive more information because we are amping up our level of awakening. I mean, if you're watching this, you have already had kind of your first big awakening experience, right? <laughs> but this card always comes up when, wow, my third eye is starting to hurt just looking at this. This card comes up whenever you are just leveling up to a new level of awakening. And it's that feeling of going, wow, just when I thought this couldn't get any crazier, it just got exponentially more crazy. This is things getting exponentially more intense um, as you really let go of all of those lower denser energies and when this card comes up and it's probably why my third eye is hurting um a lot of people get this card when they're having a lot of ascension symptoms so you know whatever your ascension symptoms <laughs> ascension symptoms are at the time of watching this video um you know that's kind of confirming it for you that you know you're not dying and you're not crazy it is because you have been you know getting a lot of downloads and upgrades and activations and your body is trying to process that and it, <laughs> it's it's this sound of the universe card you are tuning in to the music of the spheres the sri yantra sacred geometry is important right now i feel um 
I'm actually not not even that familiar. I, I like I don't even know how to describe it to you. I'm I'm not that big. I mean, I'm really interested in sacred geometry, but I'm not that knowledgeable about it. So, but I know that this design here is called the Sri Yantra and I don't know, I feel like somebody watching this should look that up and that you you could get activations actually just from looking at that. But I I am thinking for some reason um about channeling stars talking to the stars themselves i've never had any luck talking to stars but i i do talk to planets <laughs> i really enjoy talking to planets and i find that fairly natural and easy and for a little while i've been thinking why why can't i hear stars stars should be a similar level of consciousness as a planet right but maybe that's not the case because planets are earth energy because i mean they're made of you know <laughs> rocks but you know that's not even the case because they're gas giants are like um what saturn is made of mostly helium and hydrogen right if i remember correctly but stars are fire energy stars are fire energy and they are fusing and exploding and That's, that's important to this in a way that I, I don't understand. There's something about fire energy and talking to stars. I don't know. I don't know what this is about, but I suspect we will find out in the coming months um, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see a sudden increase in people who are channeling stars themselves, kind of in a similar way that I, you know, channel, or I think if it more is just talking to the planets, uh, somebody, somebody is going to be talking to the stars and like the actual stars, like individual stars, learning their personalities and learning to receive messages and data upgrades upgrades from the stars themselves oh this is like astrology but you know in our solar system we use astrology you know for the sun the moon and all of the planets right but there is a level of astrology that has to do with the way the stars are rotating themselves and kind of the galactic zodiac which i don't know <laughs> i don't know if any humans know anything about that because we know a little bit about how the planets rotating around us um, is, a, or you know, not around the Earth, but right, all of the planets, including Earth, are spinning around the sun, and they're everything is moving through the different zodiac signs. And from our perspective on Earth, and we know kind of how that affects us. But this has to do with how all of the stars in the entire galaxy are rotating through their different cycles and their different grid patterns. There is a grid. A, net, a grid, a grid work of energy in the galaxy, and the stars move through them, and that has to do with the galactic cycles, right? Because we know about um, astrological seasons on Earth, and we also know about you know the as the sun goes through them, and then there's also you know the things like the age of Aquarius and the age of Pisces, you know, which are each like 2400 years i think people say i can't remember exactly but that has to do with the tilt of the earth i think but there is also these galactic cycles galactic cycles that's what this is about that's what i'm trying to get at that is what this message is about galactic cycles so not only are we shifting cycles on our planet but the entire galaxy is shifting cycles i just saw the metaphor of a gear shifting like shifting gears in a, on a bicycle um you know you uh, shift up in gear and everything uh, speeds up. You know, if you put your, your bike in the right gear, then now it's easier to pedal and you also go faster. So <laughs> this, I don't know. I guess this is just a message somebody wants us to know. The stars, I guess, the stars themselves want us to know that the entire galaxy is shifting up into a new cycle, into a new age uh, in the galaxy and... 
there's no going back. Um, I think the, the kind of human level a takeaway from this for us is that we should have faith. Now I'm going to jump back to the very first card here. Ninth house. We should have... We should be able to trust, I think is how I'd like to put it. We should be able to trust that things are working out perfectly because literally the entire galaxy is shifting, is moving into a new cycle and is raising its frequency. Like this isn't, this is not the descension cycle anymore where the galaxy was slowing down and going into lower gears and descending down into, you know, many lifetimes of unpleasantness for us. It's shifting up. And that is why we can really let go of all of our human problems because if the entire galaxy is changing that is how like secured and assured everything is and i think this is important because of all of this aquarius energy you know if you're watching this when i post it um so much aquarius energy is making a lot of people anxious it definitely makes me anxious um like it's like a, it's harder with all this Aquarius energy it's a lot harder for me to drop out of my mind my mind wants to be running because Aquarius energy is you know air energy it's the mental body and also with Mercury retrograde um for example I just had a crazy I've I've been having a crazy week trying to deal with um how should I put it some fraud essentially I, I have a <laughs> uh, my husband and I are experiencing a problem with fraud I won't go into the details and it's turning out to be um an insane bureaucratic nightmare to get it all sorted out and I do not know how I'm going to get it to sort, to sort it out and I remember ask, I was so irritated and frustrated and stressing out about it and I went to my cards and asked I was like why <laughs> like why is this happening this is so like I can't handle this and the card that came out said laugh it off <laughs> and I remember going into this Mercury retrograde thinking I need to keep my sense of humor because this this shit's going to be like, you know, going to be nuts. And the important thing is for me to remember to just laugh it off and to maintain my perspective and to just realize how ab absurd everything is and ultimately how unimportant everything is. And as soon as I shifted that in my mind, I shifted my like, you know, belief system really and was able to drop out of being stressed out about dealing with this bureaucratic human nightmare. And suddenly it all just became funny. And I know I understand, you know, now that it's not really that important and that it will get itself handled. And on some level, I really did choose this experience and it is teaching me something. It is aligned for me, despite the fact that I am not particularly enjoying it, but now I'm able to laugh at it. So yeah, <laughs> the entire galaxy is shifting into a new cycle. We are learning to listen to the stars. I feel like to reiterate that all of us have the opportunity to really tune into the stars themselves and to listen to the music of the spheres. That phrase, the music of the spheres, has fascinated me ever since I was a little kid. I never really understood what it meant until right now. It's the songs the stars are singing, and we can listen to that. And that is how we can receive information about what is happening to the galaxy, what kind of frequency the galaxy is in, what patterns the galaxy itself is moving through. This is really... Um, inviting us to tune into the galactic cycles and the galactic energy which is important because i feel at least for me and i think for a lot of star seeds the whole shift in consciousness is going to really involve tuning into your parallel selves that are like galactic beings like galactic ets over the past week um i have been getting these weird impressions that i am like a pink and purple alien kind of actually the colors of this spread like cloth here <laughs> pink and purple all swirly skin really tall and skinny um and i'm standing on a ship looking out a window and i'm looking at saturn i'm looking out at saturn and that's me in a parallel life i've connected with her in a few other places but i feel like we're we're starting to get like closer together like we're really connecting with each other and i think we're all going to be having that kind of experience of getting closer with all of our parallel selves especially our like galactic selves right especially anybody um and i mean all star seeds on some level well i'll say almost all <laughs> virtually all star seeds are connected on some level with the galactic federation so giving us all an opportunity to be tuning into that because that's going to be we're going to be waking back up to that waking back up to our galactic lives i guess is how i'll leave that and 
So we have vulnerability, gracious re receptivity, and Leo, I will. In order, man, so many of us <laughs> have been doing way more work than we understand. Um, I think we tend to feel like our starseed missions involve actually doing something in our human bodies, even like, you know, meditating or going to some kind of ceremony or going someplace and doing something specific in our human bodies, doing some kind of energy work, like deliberately while we're conscious in our human bodies. And all of that is very good. I had some experiences this week that really made me understand that <laughs> anything that I'm here to do, I'm kind of doing regardless of whether I do it or not. Um, a lot of our missions are being carried out on the astral plane when we are sleeping or even just in our parallel manifestations of our consciousnesses. Um, those are, are the things we're here to do. We're doing them. And it doesn't even matter if we know what we're doing <laughs> or not. Um, and if we ever feel like we want to sit down and meditate and do deliberate energy work, do some kind of ritual, do, do some kind of ceremony, that is all really good and fantastic and awesome. And we're all probably going to continue to do that. But I think that is actually just an experience for our human selves. That is the experience that we are creating for ourselves in our human bodies to make us like, it's something fun to do. <laughs> and it's, but it's like the real work isn't done so much in our human bodies. It's done on the astral and we're just mirroring that here in our in our human bodies and really the only thing we need to be doing in our human bodies is just existing in them and being grounded in them because then any work we do on the level of our consciousness just automatically grounds through our bodies and into the earth and that is really all we need to do is exist <laughs> and um so that whole tangent came up because gracious receptivity gracious receptivity I have been feeling this and I know everyone's feeling this, right? Like when are things, when am I going to see my manifestation? When, when are things going to be easier for me? When am I going to have more money? When am I going to have for more free time? When are we going to start to see the changes um, that we have been working on so hard to bring in? Um, and that is going to take vulnerability and receptivity. Okay. And I, I like that these go together because Most of us are blocking ourselves from receiving the ease and abundance and flow and manifestations that we want. We're literally stopping ourselves from getting it because we're clogged up. <laughs> we're like energetically constipated. Um, as an example, I did recently a energy session, like a video. It was just a YouTube video by Regan Hillier. It was like a, an abundance, cl like clearing and activation. And... When it got to the part where she cleared out old patterns that were blocking me from bringing in my abundance, I literally saw a black mesh get ripped out from my entire body. And for the next two days after that, I felt like I was made of, like, like I was a sponge. I felt like so spongy inside, like there was room inside of me. And I realized that that black mesh that was ripped out of me was like programs that I had built up in myself over many lifetimes that, you know, I needed when we were in the dissension cycle that had, you know, served me in a specific way. But <laughs> what was it doing now? It was literally just taking up space inside my energy body that so abundance couldn't come in. If like money would come in, it would just bounce right off of me because I literally didn't have any room for it. <laughs> so it's really important to make room, to make room literally in our energy bodies for the things that we want, for the abundance that we want, for the free time that we want, anything that we want, anything we're trying to manifest. We need to make room for it. In order to make room for it, we need to be vulnerable. You know, it um, <laughs> because now that I have this this mesh thing, this like weird, nasty kind of programming that was inside of me, it had on some level been keeping me safe, um, or at least I perceived it that way. I perceived that it was keeping me safe from something, and now it is gone. It leaves me a little bit vulnerable. At least I end up feeling vulnerable, <laughs> but I need to be okay with that so that. I can make room to receive all of the things that I have been summoning. So same thing goes with all of us. Whatever you're trying to manifest, make room for it first. You need to have space for it to come in, like energetically, physically, 
mentally, emotionally, like in every way that you could apply that. <laughs> Make room first so that the thing you want can flow into you. <sighs> and last, but definitely not least, we have... Oh, did my uh, sleeves just get on the camera? Sorry, guys, I'm literally in my pajamas in in a, like, white and pink nightgown. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, I couldn't even be bothered to paint my nails, which I, I, usually, I typically like to do um, because I'm kind of self-conscious about my hands, I guess. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't even handle that. I couldn't even paint my nails. Couldn't even uh, put on a proper shirt. Um, I'm going to chalk it up to all that Aquarius energy. <laughs> but anyway, um, Leo and Pluto. Leo, I will. The self, this is your sun. This is your solar plexus. This is your willpower. This is your, all of our center energy. And Pluto coming in to transform the self. I think on one level, this is simply you know, <laughs> I can talk about ego deaths and releasing things that no longer serve us. You know, I can talk about that forever, um, but it's more, more of that. I am interested that this Leo card came up because Leo and Aquarius are opposite signs. They're opposite sides of the pole. On one hand, you have Leo, which is the self, and Aquarius on the other end, which is the collective, essentially, the collective of individuals. And I had been thinking about, like, Leo all week because we have so much Aquarius energy. It's been weird because on one level, we're kind of being taken out of ourselves, but on another level, I think people are having trouble socializing. It's not a good week <laughs> or even a good month, really, for for socializing. People are feeling um, a little quiet, a little trouble communicating, um, a little bit slow, a little bit just kind of wanting to do their own thing, I think. Um, I mean, that's partly because of the Mercury retrograde, but I think something interesting is happening when we put all of this energy into Aquarius. It's almost like it's giving our... our um, it's giving our Leo energy a break so that it can transform. It's like when you break your leg and you put your leg in a cast, you need to, um, you know, stay off your foot for two months so that your foot can heal. That's kind of what I feel like is happening um, with this transformation. All of this energy, because if you have Leo over here and right now all of the energy is sucked out of that and it's all in its opposite, opposite pole in Aquarius, and it is kind of putting our egos on our solar plexus and all of our Leo energy in this quiet space so that it can transform. I think it's going to be very interesting in a few months to see how we all bounce back from this. For everybody watching this around the time when I post it, I think once we get into Aries season, um, you know, after the spring equinox or the fall equinox, if we're in the south southern hemisphere, after the, after the equinox, We're going to be different people. We're going to be different people in a good way. And I think, how, how, how do I want to put this? People have trouble transforming because other people don't like it when we transform. Um, do, do you guys know what I mean? Do you ever feel like you've done all of this inner work, all this personal growth, or even maybe you've just like changed the kind of music you like to listen to. Maybe it's something really simple or you've changed what you eat. Maybe you used to stick to a specific diet and now you've changed your diet. And now it's like, you almost don't want to tell people that you've changed because now everyone's going to be just up your ass about, right? You know, it's like, if you want to go vegetarian, then all of your friends who are, you know, omnivores, they're going to be all judging you for going vegetarian. And if you were a vegetarian and then you want to go back to eating bacon, then all of your vegetarian friends are all judging you. So all of this social judgment and social like eyes on you makes it difficult for you to actually live out your personal transformation, <laughs> no matter what it is, if it, even if it's something like the kind of clothes you wear, the kind of makeup you wear, um, what you eat. Um, I think for most of us, this is going to be, I think it's going to be playing out on the physical level um, a little bit for everybody, but we're also having these massive 
shifts in our consciousness. Obviously, these these shifts in our consciousness aren't stopping for the rest of our lives. This is just, you know, this just goes on forever. This is just what we do now. We transform our consciousness forever. <laughs> so <sighs> we need to all allow ourselves and the people around us to be able to have the space they need to transform. And then when they come back to the fold, like when they, when everyone, including ourselves, when we all re-enter the social sphere, how do we help everybody feel comfortable presenting their new selves? How do we, how do we constantly, I think this is a really important thing to remember for, for forever. How do we continually allow everybody to present their new self to the world even on a daily basis? How do we constantly allow everybody to be fluid and flowing and transforming all the time? I mean, I don't have a, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I don't know that that is, um, that is, that's like a 5D problem. I think that's like, obviously I'm not going to have an answer because, and you're not going to have an answer instantly either, right? Because this is one of those 5D problems. I've been noticing that we're all being confronted with weird problems in our lives and it could be manifesting on a very mundane level. But if you look deep behind your problem, you can go, wow, this isn't like a normal human problem. <laughs> or maybe you used to think of it that way. And a normal human way of solving the problem would be to like impose con control structures to say no, no to this and yes, yes to that. And then to say, we have to follow these rules. We have to follow these patterns. We have to follow these structures and we're going to control it. That is how we used to keep things under control, right? Well, control structures are crumbling. So we need to figure out these new fluid ways of allowing things to flow. So, you know, the obvious thing is just dropping judgments, dropping judgments on ourselves, dropping judgments on other people. And even I think really allowing people to flow in and out of our lives, really allowing people to flow in and out of our lives. Like, you know, if, uh, like I have such a hard time keeping up with my mom and my sister when they're they're texting me. <laughs> Sometimes I don't like I just forget to look at my phone for four days and then I pick it back up again. And it's like there's like 50 text messages from them and I have to like reply to it. And it's like it bogs me down. <laughs> you know, the just keeping up with my texts bogs me down. And um, <sighs> so I don't know how we get, you know, everybody on board with this, but I think all we can do, that's all we can do, right? Is start with ourselves, start with ourselves. Um, completely dropping expectations for other people to behave in a certain way at all, even in terms of replying to a text. And I think even, even in terms of, you know, when we make social commitments, we want people to, you know, to show up. If you, if you plan on having coffee with somebody at noon on Saturday, you expect them to show up. I think increasingly that's going to be very difficult because, you know, we might make a plan to do something a week in advance or even two days in advance, but things are shifting so rapidly now <laughs> that by the time it comes to do it, it might no longer be aligned for the person to go to coffee. And it's not that your friends don't want to hang out with you. It's just that I think we are all tuning into our, like the more the more in tune with our own alignment we get, the harder it's going to be to even make social commitments. <laughs> you know, I would actually like something um, I, I am trying to practice is to commit to less, like just in general, like I, I don't, I'm trying not even to tell myself, you know, I, we, I used to say, okay, I'm going to go get groceries on Monday. It'd be like Saturday. And I say, okay, I'm going to go get groceries on Monday at 11 AM. I don't even do that anymore. I just go get groceries right when it feels like it, because here we go. Right at the very beginning of the video, I was talking about all of us stepping into our perfect alignment. And that is how we live in the new earth utopia. So <laughs> that is why, that is why I've been fumbling through this whole message of dropping out of like social commitments and social judgments and allowing people to be their 100% pure authentic selves in every moment is because that is the only way that we can walk in our perfect vertical alignment, like aligned with our higher self and through our higher self aligned all the way up with source. If we, if we want to live in the magical utopian new earth that I'm imagining, and of course you can have your own imagining of what you want the new earth to be like, and that's perfect. We, we can each go to our own future timeline that is most aligned for us, that that's perfect. <laughs> so if you want to get to your most aligned, perfect future timeline, 
The only way to do that is by walking in your own alignment in every single moment. <laughs> and on a human level, I think that entails not expecting yourself to do anything in a specific way or at a specific time because your mind will say, go get groceries at 11 a.m. on Monday, <laughs> but maybe that is not the most aligned way for you to get food, right? In my description at the very beginning, the most aligned way for you to eat your perfect food would be to be so aligned with source that you could walk outside, put out your hand and have the world's most perfect orange fall into your hand and eat that and just just have it blow your mind with how amazing it is. <laughs> so if we want to move into that level of perfect alignment where your perfect meal literally falls out of the sky into your hand at the moment you want it, there is no room for expectations and commitments on on for yourself you know i think we can toss everything else i was trying to fumble through about talking about other people this is all about yourself because the more you walk in your own alignment the more that will inspire other people to walk in their own alignment and of course if you are walking in your own alignment it'll naturally become easier for you to like allow other people to drop into their own alignment and then we will all be dropping out of our judgments we will all be dropping out of our expectations together naturally and collectively just by focusing on our own perfect sovereign alignment that will naturally be different and unique for all of us. <sighs> I hope that made a little bit of sense, <laughs> or maybe I don't even hope it made sense because I don't think it needs to make sense. I know that you guys are all, you know, my deepest soul family and you are all <laughs> super empathic and energetically sensitive and I could probably just sit here and speak light language and you guys would understand on some level so I guess I hope you enjoyed the energetic transmission and I will be seeing you guys on the astral bye